Peace and love, ladies and gentlemen. You are now tuned in to your favorite podcast, Featured, and I'm your host with the most, Kush Tucker, coming live and direct in full effect with my co-host. Mike L. Peace and love, everyone. And today's special guest is Dan Moon. What's happening? Thanks for being here, Dan. Thanks for having me. No, for sure, man. Appreciate you coming through. Definitely. Today, Dan Moon is promoting his new single, soon to be released, Freshly Brewed. Let's get straight into it. That's all y'all get, man. Yeah, that's that's, it. Yeah, that's yeah. If y'all want to hear the rest, y'all go, go ahead and uh, download the stream that. Go follow Dan right now. Don't play with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's hot, man. Where can they find that at, Dan? We want um, to be able to find you. On my hard drive. <laughs> uh, on Instagram, uh, Patreon, it'll be up there. And then For it's sure. coming out uh, on the, all the streaming services this summer. But okay, that's okay, with okay. my really good friend, 200 Records a Day. Yeah, uh, I seen that you had a feature on there, man. Yeah, he, got, he has a dope verse on there, too. Incredibly talented dude and one of my biggest inspirations. So, one nah, of my best you. friends. Hell yeah. yeah. And so, what is your Instagram? I just want to make uh, sure they a go. A Lunar Landing. Okay, good, good, good. Sure, um, sure. Now, we want them to have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. We that way they can tap that in. That way they can get that link in his bio. It's follow. the only one that I use. It's the only social media that I really use. So okay. Instagram, so you don't have a TikTok or none of that? I have a TikTok, but only for trolling. Is it the same thing? It's the same thing. Okay, okay. So if y'all want to follow him on TikTok, I <laughs> love it. trolling. Only for scrolling. scrolling. Oh, for scrolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't troll. I don't troll. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I don't like that. I like you, Dan. I have trouble posting just to one social media, so to do all... All of the things. See what I mean? Like, you got to get re- repurposed. I, Repurpose I am. Yeah. There's like I other ones too. I'm going to download it too. He just told me about yeah. it. Okay. Feel me? But I know for sure it's easy. Like if you use Facebook, I don't use Facebook like that yeah. no more. And I don't really know anyone that's like my age or younger that uses Facebook it. is where your money is. Your ads on Facebook, most people buy. Yeah. That's so I mean. that's but, like Instagram and them are really good for like advertisement. Yeah. And but I know it's known. easier to connect your Instagram and your Facebook. Like it's. it's well, yeah, they're the same company. It's, it's the yeah. same it's thing. The same so company. like, feel me, if you got a Facebook, just connect it to Instagram that way. Whatever you post to IG, at least you'll be using two platforms at once. That's true. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In case you don't do repurpose. Yeah. Trying to build up the YouTube. And the Patreon, the you know subscriber oh, yeah, nah. base ones, and yeah, uh, that's what we want to get into the Patreon because we want to have like exclusive episodes from yeah. this yeah. on a Patreon yeah. where like it might be a little bit more X-rated content. Well, we can show them the outtakes. Yeah, yeah. we can show them the outtakes, and and you know, is this the casting couch? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know? <laughs> Dude. Man, so I heard in the song you said um, the inspiration was Spitter and um, Wiz, man. Yeah, so at that time. I had been listening to a lot of Currency mm-hmm. and Wiz, especially like when I go to the gym and stuff like that. It's really yeah. great for that. And so that was just there. But the hook is like getting high on my couch and I'm freaking out, yeah. trying to be cool like these other rappers, but I don't know what they're talking about. They talk yeah. about money, cars, clothes, hoes. Yeah, I've, mm-hmm. I've never been in a Rolls Royce. I don't getting know anything. In the back. Yeah, I can't relate to any of that shit. Of Rolls, <laughs> I'm falling down YouTube rabbit holes and trying not to lose my grip. You know, like yeah. that's where I'm at all the time. So now you like, kept it 100. Yeah, so like, that's a good song. Like I like listening that to that bridge. Rappers. Is probably my favorite part of the song, honestly. Thank well, you, it's mm-hmm. relatable. Yeah, it's yeah. relatable. Because like I feel like I listen to a lot of hip hop and 
like it sounds so cool to me and then i'm like damn i don't know that could i yeah. get to that level? yeah like I, yeah. or do i even want to like yeah like yeah. even if when i not if but when you do get the bread like yeah. do i really want to display myself like yeah that? i just really want to go be able to like one time have a house and buy comic books and yeah that's it and buy not. comic books you the most expensive ones like, too though like because yeah, people hey, don't understand hey, like comic books get expensive very expensive so like you be thinking somebody's like, going to buy a five dollar comic book like nah no, no, it's comic go, books that's worth like no, yeah. marvel and dc comic books that's worth but I would thousands now go every wednesday and pick up the books i want to read and uh -huh. not have to worry about if later i can buy dinner yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> like, hey i can relate that's yeah. exactly been my vision for mm -hmm. all the projects and the goals i'll be working on bro is that just to have a comfortable lifestyle to yeah. where like i seen this video of michael jackson on instagram and he was just oh i would like to buy that portrait yeah i want this egyptian um chess set put that in the truck too please yeah and oh did you, don't forget my furniture i want that furniture <laughs> did you write that down on the list yeah. i was like i, I was like and he's not worrying about like you said is he going to no. be able to eat or pay his bills the next day or and i don't even want to not worry on that level like, yeah I just want to not worry the same as like a banker might not worry, like just have a house and a family and a car and a reliable thing. And if the car breaks down, you can get it fixed and not have to be like, God damn, I got to, you know, yeah, like that, you know. Nah, because them Lamborghinis. Come on, y'all. We, we, we got to do a big expensive. one time. We got to do a big one time. Oh, no, for sure. Come on. You know. Come on. You got to enjoy the money. It, it ain't real. And even if it isn't all real, well, we got to video it. But big, like, I would love to be able to like tour japan playing music and be paid to go do it like to me yeah. that's big yeah you know? no, absolutely. like it doesn't have to be okay like, i'm with you you I'm know you. like yeah, and have yeah. the flight pl paid for and the hotels and it doesn't yeah, have everything to be, it doesn't have to be the rich it just could be a nice place and then i can go there and eat and you know no nah, i want the rich <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, i'm worth yeah, the rich baby yeah. you but that's asking thing, me to come through man the show gonna be bomb as hell we gonna show out you know yeah 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 every yeah let let every footstep that's be beautiful yeah. that's it that's <laughs> you feel me you now nah, i'm with you though i'm yeah. I'm pretty conservative as a person yeah no absolutely know. i'm pretty conservative but i do think especially for like uh your followers you should at least put one bomb video out there like that where you, you are in the rows with the bun <laughs> popping the champagne <laughs> in the club just one, just uh, pouring it on some on a big stripper booty i mean i didn't come out yeah, to totally. la for no reason right like yeah no i told you yeah, nah, you gotta live a hollywood lifestyle at least like a little just bit one time you gotta time you gotta pump it out at least one time yeah, that's <laughs> one time that's you know right. what i'm saying rent all the things think about everything yeah. you go yeah. through you gotta juice it yeah. well think about everything you've gone through as a creative yeah, yeah. which you're still passing through yeah for sure how often do you really stop and celebrate yeah i mean i try to do it regularly you know but not like that you, but, you yeah know. that's what i'm saying like, so because yeah, normally creators we might be more concerned with uh being conservative with money here to sure. get this done sure. yeah and so I don't really need to do that. That's not a necessity. So I'm gonna do this instead. You gotta splurge every once in a while. Yeah, that way. Oh otherwise, you you know, you kind of on a flat line in terms of your creativeness. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, you, my my buddy Derwin, who is on that track with me, we used to live together in Orlando, and I met him doing shows. Mm -hmm. And he would tell me sometimes he's like, sometimes I just do shit so I could talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, and no, like, I agree that with was him. like, yeah, yeah, I feel him. I agree <laughs> with him. Yeah, a lot of my songs don't even be sometimes for like other people sometimes it just be like man so i can listen to that shit later like just to be, yeah. to be able to say i did that yeah like i yeah. made that song about that particular subject like, yeah. so i agree with them well you should make the art you want to hear you yeah know? yeah totally even if it is brain farts yeah. sometimes yeah because yeah. you, you that's those part songs of it too. to me be the most therapeutic you just letting it go yeah you just letting it go yeah. you just letting it off the fly like you're not trying to please anyone you're yeah. not trying to Get, yeah, none do it for no concerns. money you know you just trying to just have fun on the track the pleasing people that's a big thing that's i get stuck there you yeah. know like oh i want to make people happy like i want to make this person happy. Yeah. people i don't even know you know a lot yeah. of times you get stuck in this thing where nah, it's like this that's a lot of pressure it is, yeah. it is a lot of pressure but it's a hard thing to not especially nowadays where you feel like you have to put things out all mm -hmm. the time yeah and like everything has to be content and every like it doesn't but in your mind, it kind of feels that way. Yeah. And so the, the most therapeutic thing for me was to just make stuff that I knew I wasn't going to do anything with. Mm. And you just mm -hmm. make it to make it. I feel you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and just let it and you compile, don't put let it, it out. stack up. Yeah. And you don't put it out. And you're just making stuff. Yeah. And it's very free. No, totally. Yeah. And then you can go back to some of those makings and extract stuff 100%. from it. 100%. It's probably more extractions in the making than the actual full making itself. Yeah. 
Because I, I do that yeah. with yeah. art as well as with music. I'll say, mm, I only like 10 seconds of this, but wow, what a 10 seconds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? And then there's songs where I've wrote a verse and then years later come back to it mm -hmm. and have been able to finish the song because oh, what God. I was going through at the time came out here but there was no kind of resolution for it. Mm -hmm. But then five years later, I grew up and yeah. figured stuff out. And then I was like, oh, great. This is a song now. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Now that's real. This is a completed idea. Yeah. And that's yeah. process. Because yeah. really, you had to go through more experience to finish the song. 100%. Yeah. A lot of songs be like life story based. Like, yeah. That's the beauty about music and art, like how it transcends from like different time periods. You'd be like, man, I was in a, such a different place when I first wrote it. Mm -hmm. And like you said, then you get to the resolution. You're like, damn, the song done now. Yeah. Like, who would have knew that it was going to take me to go through some more shit and meet more people <laughs> yeah, totally. to finish a fucking song? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah totally, totally. Well, then when you, like, when you listen to music and you relate to something that somebody wrote, but they could have wrote it in the 70s, and yeah. you relate to that feeling from decades ago. Yeah, totally. You know? Well, good music does that anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's timeless. Because they capture yeah. that moment. And, Not totally. And you're going to go through it because you're a human being. Yep. You know, and sometimes what I notice, like when you listen to certain music, if you haven't had any experience yet, when you hear a song, you want to experience that. Mm. Like I remember when I was a little boy, sometimes I would hear love songs, and sometimes it make me want to experience heartbreak. Yeah, just keeping it one hundred. You didn't really understand I was, it. Yeah, I was what is that about? Yeah. So like I was like that type of like conscious, like curious kid, like to where it's like it sounds bad, but like it felt good at the same time. Like the song felt so good, but I'm like, what is she or he talking about really? 100%. Like. No, I was a love song kid too. Oh I God! Listen to love songs all the time and be like, I want that. No, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Usher, Usher was my favorite dude, man. Usher was my favorite Usher. singer. And then, like, I remember, it was probably the the Kings of Comedy DVD uh -huh. where Steve Harvey mm -hmm. comes out and does the Lenny Williams thing. And then I went and listened to Lenny Williams, and I was like, Oh God, that's good. You know, and I, yeah, like, yeah. I want to hurt that way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, for uh, real. <laughs> what does that really mean? Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Because to hurt that bad, you gotta you had to feel pretty good at one point. Yeah, you like know? it was a roller coaster. Yeah, you was up really high, and then you got like jolted down. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. yeah, that's a slide. Yeah, that's a slide. You know? Yeah, universe gonna balance it out. Yeah. I've been there many Not times. Sure. You know, <laughs> hey, if you're lucky, you'll be there many more. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Hopefully I could ride the highs for a long. And well, I think that comes like, with experience. Nah, too. that's real. It Learning it how comes. to hold on to the high, you yeah. know? Like, because sometimes we get up here and then, like, oh, it's too good, it's too good. And then, like, we mess it up. No, totally. Yeah. Totally. Self-sabotage. No, Self-sabotage. Yeah. Usually yeah. that's what it always is, yeah. but you can't take accountability, so you try to put it like, oh, it was my girlfriend. Yeah. Or, it was my ex, or it was my kids, or it was whatever. Anything. It was anything. Well, yeah. like, you Once know? you master that accountability, you're able to hold on to the high for a lot longer oh, yeah. because you can assess your own situation and and fix things yeah, yeah. you can go higher don't like yeah. this high is actually kind of low yeah yeah, yeah i totally, actually see totally. a new horizon uh, yeah. it's like <laughs> no totally yeah. no no sometimes you could be on the high and then peek out some more because there's more opportunity yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you didn't see it normally because the old you would basically say that's enough that's yeah, enough, that's enough. If, if anything more we're going to explode any more joy <laughs> and we're going to explode don't you know the happiness police are kicking the door yeah. <laughs> yeah. or even thinking that just because things are rough doesn't means that they're not good and like if you see something that's hard and you run away from it because oh it shouldn't be this way but actually if you can go through that tough part it's actually better yeah you know it's now the, the, work, lesson the work is the pleasure yeah the work is the pleasure yeah, it's yeah. just that uh, maybe it's how they did public school maybe because public school was boring yeah that it makes you feel like all work is gonna be boring but it's really not yeah mm -hmm. work you don't get anything without work yeah. You know, so like, you, how much TV can you look at? How much video games can you play? I mean, exactly. a lot. That's the. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I like your honesty, yeah, Dan. Yeah. I like nah, you ain't lying. Yeah. Hey, that's why, like, I knew that, like, when my Xbox, like, the CD drive shut down, it was really a blessing. Yeah. At first, I was really ready to go. Get like, it fixed. Yeah, go get it fixed. I was like, fuck, I can't play GTA online with my friends and my little brother no more. And that's. But then I was like, sick. hold on, bro. <laughs> like myself, my higher self was like, bro, this is really a blessing because you. this is before like the podcast, before Freed 18 time. episodes in, we were just starting, about to start releasing. I was like, bro, this is really your time to, you're going to need all this energy and focus of your mental 
to like post all these episodes and contact people to set up new dates for other podcasts and I was like, you can't be on no fucking video games, bro. That shit is done. Yeah. At least for right now. Crazy like, time. Yeah. Like that's why I always played sports games because uh-huh. they had an end. And I wouldn't play online. I would just play a game of Madden. And nah, game ends, <laughs> you kept it realistic. You know? And then <laughs> because I started, I would play like Ghost of Tsushima or something like that. Yeah. And then eight, I'd look up and eight hours later, I'm still just, you know, and you could go for another eight hours. Yeah, I got to get to level five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I haven't beat the boss yet. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> totally. But when I put those down, because when I moved out here, I sold my PS4, I sold all this stuff. Hell and, yeah. I was like, oh, damn, okay. To get the real equipment. That's mm-hmm. Get yeah. yourself a heat press and all that. Yeah, I had the heat press and all that because all that I make myself. And, you know, I realized, like, oh, if I take that eight hours yeah. and do that eight hours here. Where can they get your gear from, too? The from, hats. And, from and, me, uh, Bandcamp is is a place that I use a lot to sell things. Okay. Um, DM on Instagram. I'll send it over. Okay, but, good. But Bandcamp yeah. is... Um, that way, and then uh, shows when I start getting back out and doing those things. Heck yeah. That's I mean, your I'm last doing. performance that we saw was good, bro. Thank you. Like, it was dope as fuck. Thank you. You get real involved with the crowd and everything. I like the live action. Your subject matters, too, are, the, yeah. are really deep. It's on point. It. Yeah, no, nah, they've been on point. They've been really deep. I like when matter. you had said, like, just beyond the music, too, like, when you had hit everybody. I can't, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say verbatim, yeah. but basically, you was basically saying like, "Man, we all human beings in here. We all want the same things in life. We all want to get back home to our loved ones. Yeah, yeah. We all want to see another day. We all want our bills paid. Yeah. Should we all want to get faded sometimes or something? Like, feel me? He was like, um, he was like, so we all should be having each other back in here. Like, yeah. anytime you in the room with somebody, don't matter if you know them or not." Yeah. If something pop off in here, we should all be ready to have each other back. Yeah. And I was like, that was deep, bro. I was like, I love that quote. Like when nah, you said it was, that. It was good. I feel like when you go into spaces with people, I think a lot of times now, especially, you know, you go, you have your headphones in. I do it all the time. I don't, yeah. I don't walk around town without my headphones in. I feel weird, you know. Mm-hmm. But you go into spaces and you have your headphones and you feel like you're not in the room with people. Yeah. And I started seeing that happen in, at shows, especially shows that happen at like bars and stuff mm-hmm. like that. People mm-hmm. just be there drinking and there's a show happening and no one's paying attention or whatever. And I like to recognize that like and point out to be like, we're in a room together. These are Correct. people that you don't know at yeah. all, you know. And in the world, when you're walking around, things happen and we're all kind of accountable for each other while yeah. we're in this space together, especially especially in art spaces like that. Yeah, you know? definitely. Because that's people coming together to celebrate something and celebrate each other and be in a place that makes them happy and 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 joyful. And yep. that's what we should be there for. You know, it's different communities coming together to experience that same thing. Totally. And that's it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Re- really part of a bigger community. A hundred percent. And yeah. and remove the thoughts of separation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all here collectively. Yeah. So yeah. we should move collectively. Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of times when you go in those spaces, like it's representatives of different communities. You know, you have your family and your friends and stuff like that where yeah. we didn't know each other before Correct. the event. Yeah. And I came with my family, my friends all yeah. in tow in back of me, you know, like and we're because we choose to be in artistic spaces, we're kind of like the representatives for our communities because we get out and about. You guys totally. just went up to Portland. I moved out here yeah. from a different place. So yeah. because of what we do, we're the travelers and the, the movers and the shakers type thing. We're going to meet people from different places that we're kind of like the ambassadors for our community. Nah, I totally agree with you. No, no, that's real. Yeah, that's nah, real. Nah, I definitely I feel that. like that. Like, we the ambassadors. Like, that's how I used to feel like when I used to work and I used to, like, feel me. Uh, basically, like, you know, refer friends to a job. Like, hey, man, make sure you go on time, bro, because yeah. I'm the timely person for that job. Like, everybody at that job love me. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, you got to make sure you come correct. If I'm referring you there, you got to come correct because you represent me. Yeah. Like, 100%. people automatically assume, like, birds of a feather flock together. So if I'm on point, they're expecting you to be on point. Correct. And if they're not on point, it reflects poorly. Yeah, like, so why'd you recommend? Yeah, sometimes right. Swayze has slippage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I showed them no slippage, but yeah. just off so. your amigo, they could be like. <laughs> One of the things my parents always like hammered home to me was you are who your friends are. 
Mm-hmm. And just because you're not doing something, if you're around people that are doing something, you're doing something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, because yeah. that's how society works. Yeah. You're not just yeah. a witness of it. Right. If no. you're around for you more than, there. if you're around for more than one occasion, you're you not just there. a, <laughs> you're not just a witness. Him. He was there. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. people will lump you in. Yeah. You know. And like you said, even though you might not have participated just because you was there, nah, he was there. Yeah. yeah. He he voted for it. Right. Yeah. 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 Sure. He, he it, voted you know, for yeah. it. Because if you wasn't voting for it, you wouldn't even put yourself there. Yeah. Well, your energy mm-hmm. would push you into another situation. Yeah. Right? Your, your vibration would just, you, you're you only like, going to be where you, where like you vibrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This totally. energy feels toxic. And I think that was something that, <laughs> as I got older, because I'm 37 now, and like, especially going through like music stuff, like when I was younger, I would go to places and perform in places where I was like, damn, that, it feels off. You know, uh-huh. you're at a bar, everyone's drunk, no one's paying attention. It's like, what, it feels off. And it's like, oh, I guess I just got to do it. I got to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And as you get older, you're like, I don't have to do yeah. that. There are yeah. plenty of places that are I feel comfortable in to go perform that are listening rooms and people are there for this. Yeah. And then you are better at picking those spaces. Yeah, know? correct. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> so you're saying you've done the chitlin circuit. <laughs> <laughs> he done the chitlin circuit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. They throwing bottles at the stage yeah. in the Blue Brothers. Oh, yeah. the first show I ever did was in Tallahassee, Florida, and we opened up. Uh, I can't remember who we, who we opened up for, but it was a, a decent sized show. It was our first time ever on stage, mm-hmm. you know. And this woman, we got up there, and for our whole 20 minute set, just sat in front of us and gave us a finger. And wow. the whole time, the dedication. Was she was, drunk? Probably. Okay, okay. But just the whole time. And just I was, flipping you the bird the whole it, time? The whole time. Wow. And, you know, we weren't very good. That was a terrible time. We were young. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but still, like, but, it was but, in that she, area. It was in that area. Take, where she takes your you confidence. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. damn. You was it was saying, in that area. It's where, my first time, baby. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in my head, I was like, She damn. pulled out the axe on the motherfucker and just said, wow. Yeah, because it was the first time I'd ever been on stage. It was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. This is crazy. But that was a crazy, like, again. spiritual, emotional, yeah. mental test all yeah. in one. Yeah. You have to be, like, if I, when I meet people and they're like, oh, I've never been booed before, I'm like, damn, you haven't been mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah, like, long you enough. Got, yeah, you nah, gotta, yeah, you really sure. got to put yourself out there. Because how do you know that you still want to do it? Nah, for that's real. Yeah. If that's real. Never been nah, in booed. the beginning, I was booed. Yeah, of course. Or, like, laughed at. Oh. I remember 100%. one of the first performances. Get that shit out of here. I was so confident. He took me to my first <laughs> performance when I was 18. I was so confident. I was practicing this verse all the way, driving in the car. Feel me? Because I'm like, I got to spit the verse without the bars in the background. Yeah. Feel me? I was like, oh, it's yeah. not real hip-hop. Yeah. That's how I felt back then. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. got to spit the verse without the bars without in the, the background. Yeah. So, like, I get there, get past the first verse, get to the second verse. I forget the last, like, six bars. No, I mean, the last eight bars on the 16. And I'm like, fuck, I just start freestyling. That's a pro move, though. But, like, yeah. But, like, in the beginning, like, I was kind of, like, I paused for a bit. I choked up a little bit. And yeah. I just said, fuck it, I'm a freestyle. Like, feel me? I probably paused on, like, four bars. Like, yeah. But. Yeah. It's learning how to go through those things yeah. and learning how to deal with people walking away from the set. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. You know, learning how to people, like, say stuff and this and that. And also, like, figuring out, like, who you are on stage. Yeah. Like, you know, when I first, you're young, like... I got the sunglasses and the stuff, and it's not who I am. It's just what I've seen people do before yeah. on stage. You don't know. Not talking. And then yeah. you're up there, you feel uncomfortable, and people notice when you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. No, they when do. you get on a stage with a microphone, your energy is the energy of the room. Yeah. And so if you're uncomfortable and not believing it, then no one else is going to be. No, talk, sure. talk, 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 yeah. You got to sure, sell sure. yourself yeah. first. No, so for sure. Learning, learning, <laughs> learning how to walk yeah. in confidently. But not cocky and not, Correct. you know, like yeah. learning how to do that, that takes a long time. Yeah, yeah. it does. Now, it's a circus, man. It's, it's, it's a, it's it a circus. It takes some trial and error, man. And you practice. definitely got to get up in there. Yeah. You got to be patient with yourself, too. A hundred percent, yeah. You got to be patient with yourself. Yeah. But that's why if, if like, going through those things and, like, mm-hmm. getting booed and getting walked away and performing for nobody but the bartender and that kind of stuff, and then you still come back, it's like, okay, yeah. it's not yeah. going anywhere. No, no, totally. What I had to learn performing was giving myself time doing my set too, not feeling like I'm rushed. 
like get more personable. Like by the time I got to my fifth performance, I was like, let me start performing more songs that's like get the crowd engaged and let me start introducing myself and tell people like where the inspiration from the song maybe came from or what the yeah, song yeah, is yeah, about yeah, or yeah. More ask everybody with. in the room how they day going. Yeah, more to connect me? with, the for real. The pacing of the show. Yeah, like, yeah. like Vinny, because when I first started performing at 18, I was just... Hey, I'm Swayze Blue. Boop, do, 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 yeah. Boop, boop, <laughs> song, 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 yeah. song, 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 yeah. song, song. But it, like, I started noticing. I'm like, dang, I was so nervous because I didn't really relax until I should have relaxed, got to know it. You know, you can't get to know everybody, but you know, like, vibe out with everybody in the room that you finna perform for. Yeah, you can definitely not rush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially if they tell you you got ten minutes, you can go over one minute, my nigga. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Totally, totally. And learning how to like use silence and learning how to use like yeah. you know, no, that's real. Being quiet, like I've seen artists that i've like performed with who i think are incredible like walk up and people are talking the whole time and they yeah. just stand there and then one person notices someone and then they stop and then they stop and then before you know it the whole room is silent mm. and they didn't say a single word the whole yeah. room's just watching them because they just stood there and then they perform and they got them mm. you know? <laughs> and it's a different thing instead of yeah. saying like hey everybody shut the fuck up you know, like, I feel you. <laughs> well, that's when's the last time someone told you to go fuck yourself that you listen to them more? Yeah, like, no, no, never, no. Like, that never no, works. No, never, that never, never works. That never I'm works. glad you made that point because some people still uh, think that's an antidote bro. to search you know. to every situation. Fuck, fuck yeah. me, well, fuck I, yeah, you. Yeah, I see artists get like antagonistic of the crowd, and I'm like, yeah. damn, it's gonna suck to go on after. Mm -hmm. like, you know. And I feel because like the energy gets so mucked up. You should have a joke ready. You're like that. a janitor, like man, it's a lot of cleanup to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah, say, everybody. boy, oh boy, yeah. Yeah. right before my set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because I'm gonna come out yeah. and talk about my feelings. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally. Because then I'm gonna come out and talk about my feelings, and then everyone's gonna be like, oh, yeah. disarm everybody. I, I get very vulnerable on stage, mm -hmm. and I'm not afraid of that. Yeah. Which I think no, I can tell. Helps, I think that helps people drop their guard. Drop their guard. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Well, and it's good too because after that drop guard, then everyone comes back up, but mm -hmm. not to the same level of protection. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. You know. Nah, they're more loose, more loose. So you should definitely be an opening act. Yeah, I've been for yeah. a long time. I've been opening act. It's because yeah. you have a good psychology. And well, like how to read the room and how energy works. And I think too, like it's funny that you say that because like I would go do shows with people, mm -hmm. and I would always open because one I wasn't worried about it, like yeah. getting people's attention and bringing yeah. people in. Some people would be worried about being the first, yeah, act and correct, and was, or messing up. Yeah, and I was good at getting people in. Yeah, you know, close to the stage, mm -hmm. and then also too. I trusted myself to get that energy yeah. from the crowd and instead of leaving it to somebody else, especially like at a certain level, there is no, there's no opening act. There's no headline. No, nah, it's, it's just act. Yeah, it's just act. We all just on tour with each other. We're just yeah. on the road playing shows. Nobody knows who anybody is. We're just out here to try to have a good time. Yeah, yeah totally. And so I trust And that's how we want to do it. Oh, God. Yeah. And then, you know, one day you might open it up. One day you might open it Hell up. Yeah. You know, and like that's how it goes. Well, that way you get that experience too. Like, yeah. how much energy do I need to bring for the opening? Yeah. You know, and then, and what's the variable on that? Because, mm -hmm. like you said, silence can be just as powerful as, as yeah. loudness. And what's, yeah. what's the set list going to look like? I'm somebody who I like to get places early mm, to I feel you. just to stake it out. It. Yeah. And I'll just sit. In yeah. the back and watch people come in. You go hunting, it, huh? Have you been hunting? No, I okay, I was wondering. But it seems this yeah, 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 because it's similar kind of thing. Yeah. Just kind of sit and hunters. watch. Yeah, and like I'll watch people come in. I'll watch people interact. I'll see who's listening to what, who's doing what. You know, I have mm -hmm. my little merch table set up, and I'll just be there interacting. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, I think I'll just start with this one and this. You know, yeah, and go from there. Yeah. I feel you. So kind of like calling audibles at the line of scrimmage, you know? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. But you got to know your whole playbook before you can do that. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, feel, and feel comfortable and competent in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, no, definitely. And that's practicing. That's open mics. I'm a huge fan of open mics and hit, getting mm -hmm. up on, in yeah. spaces, especially like making hip-hop music, like going to open mics where there is none mm -hmm. and rapping for people. Yeah. And seeing the reaction, and because if you can get one of those crowds that's not there for a rap show, yeah, 
it's another level of stuff because they're listening to what you're saying. They're, you know, a lot of them might not even like rap music. You know, it's like, oh, no, for real. I heard Drake one time. And like, yeah, yeah, I feel <laughs> you. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. Nah, <laughs> not feel you. So you're definitely moving the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And n- that's a good gauge. I didn't think about that one. That's a good gauge. You know, or like all acoustic performances. Yeah. And then I plug in my phone and play a little beat. And, oh, that's mm-hmm. tight. You know. Hell yeah. It's Wait, what do you mean you play a beat from your phone? Yeah. So. Like I have instrumental on my phone. I don't like play the beat on my phone. I know I did that little motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Okay. I was like, but what? just have the instrumental. On the okay, phone. okay. Now I got you. Then I got you. Then. But there are a lot of open mics that won't. They'll like put it in the thing. Like you can't plug in, like, just specifically so you don't mm-hmm. come there. But oh, okay. you can't plug in your phone. Like you got to send you in the play beat. An instrument or yeah. But I've gotten in with people who play guitar, and then I'll rap over the guitar. No, I feel you. you know? I like that though. Yeah. Live music has just got a certain genuine oh, yeah. feel to it. I'd love to get with a band. Yeah, no, nah, but the band music is completely different than uh, digital music. Yeah, yeah. It's harder though, especially if you're gonna be trying to go on the road. It's easy for me to put my laptop in my backpack and go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And show up and set up and nope, I got my cord. I'm plugging in and that's it. Yeah. As opposed to getting five different people on the same page and the same thing with the instruments and the thing. And Enthusiasm every night. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hard thing. Nah, nah, it is. But it ain't that hard if everyone's like on the same, on that same frequency and want the same thing. But yeah. If it's like you got to drag people, it's definitely going to feel like nah, you got to pump everyone, pump up the volume. And, like. and on the road, like, it's hard. Yeah. You know, like some shows are good, some shows are really bad. And yeah. like keeping the morale up, like you might go somewhere, and there's 50 people, and everyone's there, and everyone's buying merch and listening and doing the thing. And the next night you show up, and there's two people there, and none of them give a shit. <laughs> and you yeah. still got to play the show, yeah. and then you got to go the next day and do the thing. Yeah, you got to go home and work your job and pay your bills and do the thing, and then you got to plan it all out again. Yeah, like that's hard. <laughs> nah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah. Totally. It's hard to be yeah, consistent yeah. With, yeah. with all this stuff. With like creativity, man. Yeah. Like you said, especially like when you still got to pay the bills mm-hmm. and the creativity, not paying the bills yet. The payoff is in the distant future. Yeah. Future, yeah. future, yeah. future. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but the good thing is, if you love what you're doing, then it's then it's got a whole nother reward in the present. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know, I get it. Most creators we come into, like yourself, that we run across, they they're in it whether they were getting paid or not. Yeah. So and that's how you know if you really love it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Like I I came to the conclusion probably five or six years ago, like I'm not gonna stop creating things, you know, yeah. just because it's not doing what I wanted to do or this. Like I'm always gonna make stuff. I've yeah. always been making stuff since Hell I was yeah. a little kid. You know, drawing and writing and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna stop that. It's just who I am. Yeah. And if I can figure out the business end of it to where I can make it work. Not totally. You know, Hell and, yeah, which is a struggle because I'm not a very business-minded person. You know, mm-hmm. I'm more of a creative person. Yeah. And nowadays, it seems like you have to be everything. Mm-hmm. Nah, you do. It's a bummer. I think for someone like me, I was like, damn, okay, because there's got to be someone who doesn't create things, but it's just a great business person who likes that wants to promote things. your That's shit. It. Yeah, like, <laughs> let me link up with them and make a team. You know. Hey, but like, you know what? You could be making it right now, Dan, because it's necessary. Yeah. Just, just in saying this right now, yeah, that's real. If you we, see this and you like, <laughs> yeah, not don't totally. make art, but you like art, just come talk to me. Yeah, yeah. totally. Because you, know. you do have those not people definitely. that like when it comes to business and putting credit yeah. together, yeah. they are like same for us. If you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah, sponsor yeah. feature, if you want, uh, holla yeah. at us. I have a lot of projects and ideas in motion. Because a lot of great music coming. It's a different kind of skill. It not it is. It's, not it's is. a skill of itself. That's one of the skills that I feel like is going to be alive in the future still is AI and robots are taking over like manual jobs, like manual labor jobs, like stuff like that. Like being a personality is never going to be not like a skill. Being able to market and sell a pencil like in Wolf of Wall Street, yeah, yeah. an AI can't sell a pencil to you. Right. An AI can't sell you a, a, a show. Yeah. They can just tell you come here. Yeah. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It can set up all the, I guess, other mechanical yeah, but things can't sell that it. lead to the show. Yeah. But yeah, you right. it can't do it the can't final step. The face to face. Yeah. Nah. Why I think so much that I love the face to face. Yeah. And like the performing aspect of making music. Mm-hmm. Like I make music to go perform it. You know, I draw yeah. and stuff like that for me mm-hmm. to feel good, whether I'm going to put it out. But I write songs. Did you do the drawings for your hoodies? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's dope. Yeah. 
Um, but I write songs so I can go perform them because performing is what gives me the the energy, the yeah. feeling, I like got connecting with people. Feel the same way too, and and feeling that we share the same kind of emotion and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what makes me feel good, and so that'll never be replaced. I don't think. Nah, uh, I think it'll go into more select uh, concerts. You might have smaller concerts, but then you also song. gonna have more devoted people. Yes. So you yeah. can have a smaller concert with but a thousand more people. Intimate, you can actually give out certain yeah. special gifts. Like I love an intimate concert. Yeah. This is my favorite. And then they can, you know, your supporters can really sit around and chop it up with you because that's what everyone that, you know, loves their favorite artist. They really want to, man, I hope to meet that artist one day, man, and tell them how much I love that particular song or family. Sometimes some supporters or listeners might be confused on lyrics. Like, man, I really felt that bar, but... I really want to know from the horse's mouth, like, what did you mean right Yeah, there? what were you saying? Yeah. Like, Because I, th- so I think dope. you mean this, but yeah. did you mean that? Yeah. 100%. The no. best shows I've been to have been under 500 people. Mm-hmm. Those have been the most, like, when I've watched a show, like, yeah. it's the best experience. You know, because I've been to stadium shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't feel, and you might as well be listening to the radio. It's, it's so, so loud. Out. It's so yeah. giant. Like, you know, I, so I feel people, you. Like, unless you're right up on the stage, which is going to cost you, like, five grand, yeah. like, it, yeah, you miss it, you know. So really, you would take the f- five grand people right up on the stage, and that'd be your intimate concert. Oh man, yeah. like my because I've kind of plotted out because I got you know I understand like when you have a like a goal or a dream, like making it concrete and like achievable steps is important. And so mm. like my ideal would be to like throughout the United States to be able to sell out like two hundred fifty to five hundred cap room in like 20 states and be able to do, oh, yeah. do that, mm-hmm. you know? And cause like 250 to nice 500 run. is a really nice room. And it's manageable. Uh, manageable. Now your security, you have less security. So a lot of your insurance liability goes down. And like you said before, that personal interaction where you're at the merch table after yeah. and they all come through Correct. and you shake everybody's hand, take a yeah. picture. You can do that with that amount of people. Now you can. Jay-Z's not coming out after a show and standing by the merch nah. table and saying what's up to everybody. Yeah, you know, no, like, not even time. two people. Yeah, not even. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not you might have to pay another $20,000 to go backstage and say what's yeah. up. Yeah. But, or, or get invited to that after party right. somehow. But that's not happening. And I want that to happen. Like, I like that interaction. Yeah, no, I do too. Nah, definitely be able to have that time to because that's more content yeah feel me more mm-hmm. interaction more people getting to know you personally and, and, and look at the man sells everything most music products anything is personality it's starting to show more in this day and age in this era where people losing connection with each other because mm-hmm. of the always being down in the phone yeah. like you said headphones on mm-hmm. yeah. so people get more and more distracted less and less connected so everything seems like nonchalant yeah you feel me so like and I think too, if people see you as a human being, yeah, which you are, you just happen to create art that they like. If they if they recognize you as a human being and as a person, it gives you the freedom to do the art that you want, and them still stay on board because they recognize yeah. that you're going to change, you're going to do this kind of stuff, you yeah, know, like, like you're not perfect. Yeah, and so I think I just that's make important. Music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just drew this picture you like. There's also a lot of energy in that. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. 500 select people. And you're taking pictures, you enjoy the meal, because in this type of setting, you can set up a meal or something else yeah, yeah. that's worth the ticket price. Yeah. So that, because it is more exclusive. Yeah. yeah. And those, like, specialty shows, I think, are huge. Like, Definitely. Set up a meal, set up a, a interactive art gallery where someone's yeah. performing behind a screen. You don't even see the person performing, but you, huh. know, you walk up and do that, like, all that kind of stuff. Holograms. Yeah. yeah, so you can turn it into an extravaganza. Yeah. And you can yeah. use the technology in a way that brings people together. I think that's kind of like the place where yeah. everything's going. I like all the AI stuff because yeah. I, I mess with it all the time. I really want to master more of it, mm-hmm. but I find it fun. What do you yeah. think? You know? Like, how do you use it? I've been using uh, one for, I think, Mid Journey is what I've been using for art, and I love it. Like, the prompts seem really fun and easy to me. Okay. You know, I've used it to do some uh, uh, a hoodie that we've been working on. And I found that the the art was, I could have created the same art, but it would have took me way more time. Right. And so in terms of time consolidation, that's the number one thing I'll give it. I'll give it 100 points on time consolidation and pretty much giving me what I wanted to create on my own. In terms of it, does it, 
is it the same energy put into it that the artist will put? No, right. not at all, because I'm a graphic designer. Right. But in terms of what I wanted to do and get it done quick, it was total. I was like, wow, this is really amazing. I like this technology. Yeah. But it's certain things that we do as humans that I don't believe can be duplicated. Mm -hmm. yeah. We the greatest technology on the planet still. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, because ain't nobody cracked the human code of the DNA or just what the body really does. They got pieces, but they don't have a whole egg. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, we, like you said, we still the greatest technology. Yeah, we still the greatest technology. They ain't been figured out fully. And they and it's human beings that created that technology. You totally. You, yeah. you know, I it's we might be creating it faster than we're evolving to deal with what it's given us. You know, especially with the connecting the whole world type thing. getting ahead of ourselves like, <laughs> well they've been having us on ai computers man for a long time this they just telling you now yeah they've been using supercomputers to get answers for a long time bro since like 1950 something mm -hmm. when a computer took up a whole building yeah like a computer you now have on your desktop it used, no, used to, take to take a whole room, whole room to shit. create that computer because of the process it has hard drive we got computers in our pockets right now totally you know? with hard drive yeah, yeah totally like, yeah so you can see what the progression is if yep. you can go from a computer that took up a whole room no, to sure. now it being in your pocket shit, just think about like a hundred years ago trying to get from long beach to la was gonna take three days on foot <laughs> if you ain't have a horse yeah. You don't have a horse get to Long Beach to Los Angeles, South Central or something, it's going to take you three days. I did the math, like, on the GPS. Like, I was like, how far would this be walking or something? Like, I tried to, I went back to Western times in my yeah. head one day. I was like, let me look Well, up. even if you had the horse, it was still a long ride. Yeah. Oh, the horse said uh, one day. Yeah, one day. One day. And you might well, the not, horse said one day. might not make it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that was, like, a high possibility. Like, yeah, because there's some people in between. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We need the horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need the horse. Well, like, I, I made the cross-country trip uh -huh. a year ago, and if I didn't stop or anything, if I just drove, it would have taken me three days yeah. to go cross-country. Oh, it God. took people forever to go cross-country, and it was very, very dangerous. No, nah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Now, yeah. You know, now What'd you do, take the 40? Hmm? You took the 40 coming down. You said out of Maine. I took Maine. I, I can't remember the, the names, but I went down through New York. I had a show and a wedding uh -huh. that I stopped at. Then I came across like through Pennsylvania and stuff, and I stopped to see my brother in St. Louis. And then I came down through the desert, and I stopped and then came through okay. Vegas okay, and whatever. Okay. But That's a long route, man. It, was yeah. a long, it took a long yeah, time. Yeah, it took a like, long time. I've driven from here to uh, Cleveland. Okay. So that's a long route. That's yeah, like three yeah. k right there. Yeah, yeah. So Maine is further up oh, and on the east the coast. Yeah, yeah. So because New York's another eight from Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. So and, and wow. Maine's about five north of New York. See. Yeah. So, but yeah. you know, we got a little highway that goes boom. Yeah. You know, because people built it. You know, that cross country thing. No, for real. Yeah, no, that. But in that That's time, a hell of a thing, know. though, because you just said, so you, you're from Florida. Yep. You go up to the cold. Yeah. But it makes sense because most people I meet from New York down in Florida. Yeah. When I went to Florida, I met a lot of people from New York. So it seems on that yeah. side of the country, that's kind of the move. Yeah. yeah. You move when down. When I lived in North Carolina for a little while, uh, in western North Carolina up in the mountains, um, and then back to Florida and then to Maine, and then I was in Maine for eight years. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah, man. So you truly were committed when you made this move. Yeah. Uh, so I made the move to be closer to my girlfriend and her daughter, mm -hmm. and that's why I came out here. And I don't think she thought I was going to do it. You know, we've been talking yeah. back and forth for like six months, and I was like, okay, we're really going to How did y'all meet? Y'all met out there in Florida? So or? we knew each other from high school okay. in Florida. And then she lived her life, and I lived my life, and we reconnected online and started yeah. talking. Oh, that's dope. And I was like, hey, if I fly out to L.A., can I take you on a date? And she's like, yeah. Not thinking I was probably going to do it. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I'll be there next week. And I flew out here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you was on top. Were, yeah. You was on it like white or rice, yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing about me is yeah, if Dan, I make a decision, Dan, man had if a plan. I make a decision to say, it's a lunar landing, it. baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then, you know, we talked back and forth or whatever. And they were like, okay, if we're going to do this, we got to live in the same place. And she has a kid out here, whole life set up out here. I yeah. didn't have anything, just me and Maine. I got you. And I said, okay, I'll move out there. And she said, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, she said, you bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I built out the back you of my sure minivan, did, then. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm coming. She's like, okay, okay, okay. And then I think it wasn't until I was like, I'm leaving now. And she's like, oh, you're really coming? I was like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but I was committed to doing it. 
No, 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 that's a big commitment. To, to Dan, did you, did, I got a question, man. Did yeah. you ever want to be like an astronaut? Like, where did the in lunar the, landing well, come from? Well, my last from? name is Moon. So, okay, so yeah. it's your actual real yeah, last, last name, name Moon. Moon. Okay. And so, but yeah, I'm pretty sure as a kid I wanted to be an astronaut. At <laughs> um, my, both of my parents are firefighters, and so I think I oh, wanted to do that at some point, too. Wow, for real? That's dope yeah, as hell, bro. city of Miami. Dude, uh, decide to be a firefighter, man. That's heavy. Yeah. Okay. you're saying, now, okay. I'm going to run into a burning building but, but to you save know what? I got the feel from him that night when he performed at Bananas, and you talked about us looking out for each other. I got firemen vibes from you. Yeah, both of my parents are city of Miami fire rescue. Uh, for a long time, my mom was one of the first female firefighters of the city of Miami, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember growing up around them and and going to the station with them and doing that. And I I thought that that's maybe where I would go. Like when I was like 26, after I had taken care of my grandmother and she passed, and I moved mm -hmm. back, and I went to do my EMT and stuff. Yeah, and it just wasn't for me. Like I didn't want to see that every day, you know. Oh no, it's a uh, calling. It's, hard. it's, it's a hard. calling. It's a calling. But at the same time. I look at the music that I make as a way of connecting and helping, you know. I've had shows where people come up and grown men will cry with me after songs that I've done and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I see it as a different... No, nah, that, like that song touched me, man, about your grandma. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, that, was, that definitely touched me when yeah. you performed that, man. We didn't expect a song like that that yeah. night in Bananas. And you real. performed it, like, in the right order. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't, like, perform it at the very end and, like, bring everybody and leave everybody, yeah, like, yeah. on I a low note. Yeah, bring no, everybody totally. up after. No, I felt like you did it perfect, like, how in movies, like, you have, you start off with a high note, then by the time the middle, you might get to a middle, like, low Lower note, and then you leave off for sure either on a high yeah. note. Then it's always best to usually leave off on a high note, depending on what type of feeling you're trying to get. Well, you got to get resolution. Yeah. No matter what, whether you leave on a low, low or, or a high, high note, it's got to be, be consistent. Yeah. Got to be. Consistent. But I think you was consistent with the high, low, high. I appreciate that. You know, yeah, it was definitely. a pattern. You kept the pattern in the wave, like you know. Well, consistent. the story was so deep. Yeah. That I was like, wow, he's sharing this. I don't, not that it was wrong. Yeah, yeah, no. But we didn't expect that. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of times. Because yeah, other artists that night didn't get butt naked on the track. Like, you yeah. got vulnerable. Yeah, you get very vulnerable. And I was yeah. like, wow, this is a deep story, man. Yeah. So naturally, that, that glued us in. We talked about it on the ride home. We yeah. were like, man, that was oh, deep. I appreciate that. No, totally. You know, so. Now, you had an impactful on performance, bro. Keep well, on doing I that. Think like, too, like with the performances, especially not being known by anybody. And I think that comes to, like, with having an understanding of your ego where you're able to say, no, Nobody knows who the fuck I am. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can like, do what I want. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> and like, I'm out here for people to remember me. Like, Not I don't, totally. I don't assume that people should know me. Like, mm -hmm. like you should start strong and finish strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That middle part, because if you don't start strong, no one's going to pay attention. If That's you don't real. finish strong, no one's going to remember you. It's real. So yeah. if your best song comes in the middle of your set, you probably lost. No, no, that's real. Because yeah. no, because the way the mind works is you go into a certain trance state at concerts. Yeah. So you do notice the first acts, mm -hmm. and then in the middle everything goes to mush, but you're enjoying yeah. the vibe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at the end, then you put yeah. another exclamation point to really pay attention to what happened. Now that's real. That's okay. how the brain works. Yeah. Nah, that, I, that's deep. I should have said something earlier because when you made the comment about us all looking for, out for each other, it immediately evoked the thought of fireman running into a burning building yeah yeah i mean i think that's just something that i kind of grew up around you mm -hmm. know and yeah. so when i look at my parents i'm like okay like they make s superheroes do what you guys did yeah you know? no no farmers first, superheroes first, no 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 for, for real for strangers for people you yeah. don't know yeah yeah you know yeah so Who's running into a burning building? I'm yeah. asking a question. That's yeah. not something that everyone's running, running away for. from. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. running away from. Yeah. Which is normal. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. judge anybody who runs. No, no, no at all. Hey, I nobody, might be with you. Like, yeah. like I'll run with I, you. I was a but you admire the person that's saying I'm gonna yeah. run in. Yeah, I, I was a junior cadet. Like, I was a junior it's cadet admirable. in high yeah. school. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's why I'm so enthusiastic when you said this because it's a different breed of person who wants to run into danger. And you don't know, like. Until you have to be in those situations, you don't know how you're going to react. Like, you can train as well. As you, and training is the, the, the thing, you know? Yeah, like it's the key. Whether, yeah. It's, whether it's rapping or whether it's being a firefighter or whatever, like, the more you practice for the situation, yeah. the better you can handle But there's no training for the unexpected. No, yeah, exactly. You might <laughs> they ain't got no training for the unexpected. Yeah. Well, that's why the unexpected is The unexpected yeah, is the same. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> totally. But firemen do a good job of it. Oh, 100%. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know. Absolutely. So, with those positive, like, 
upbringings and influence, bro? Like, what was like your inspiration for like a, as far as music like coming up? Like, who did you listen to? Oh, uh, like rap wise? Yeah, or just anything. Doesn't like, it doesn't have to be rap. It could I mean, be I all types up, of genres. Because I, I listen uh, to I rock. Like, yeah, I mean, I listen all to, type of stuff. To blues. Everything. But I was listening to a lot of Outkast. Um, okay, I can yeah, hear that in your flow. That's why I wanted to know. Can you got a cold flow? Like, so I kind of oh, wanted shit. to hear, like, cause like I feel like artists that whatever whoever you grew up listening to, you slightly sound like yeah. them a little bit. Outcast for sure. Um, and at that time, it was like David Banner was. Yeah, yeah. David Banner was cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David then, Banner was coming out I with mean, it. not just his own songs, but the beats he the was beat, making yeah. with other people. One of my favorite rappers is Big Crit. I think Big Crit is incredible. Nah, Big Crit is dope. Mm -hmm. um, the Blue Scholars who are out of. We're out of Seattle. Um, I listened to them a lot, and you know, and then just, I mean, being from South Florida, I listened to a lot of Trick Daddy. Um, oh, what? Yeah, you, know, like, <laughs> you gotta listen like, to Trick. Hey, love, you know, Shit. and then you know, Baby, and, I'm and a thug. Thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite that's songs. Still that's, the, that, song. that's still on the gym playlist, you know. It's Hell like, yeah, no, nah, that's on my gym. Like, bro, I bump yeah, that. Like sometimes I go to it. Like I haven't heard I'm a thug in a yeah, while. 100%. Yeah. Hey, you want to hop on that beat with each other? Huh? You want to hop on that beat? Yeah. I was going to redo that song. And he's on we the front. He's on the front with the Sam Madison jersey. And I was a big Miami. I'm a big Miami Dolphins fan. So yeah. that was always, you know. But and then one of my favorite songwriters is Towns Van Zant, mm -hmm. uh, who's a folk was a folk country songwriter out of uh, Texas, yeah. and I think he's one of the greatest songwriters that's been. And so as far as lyricism and stuff like that, but yeah, I've listened to so much. My tastes have changed. You know, when you're younger, like it's basically what I had access to. So yeah. whatever, correct, no, that's correct. What, it was whatever that, makes that sense. Sam Goody on the on the chart. You know, mm -hmm. so I was listening to Nelly. I think Nelly's dope. I don't think Nelly gets enough credit for that. Yeah, for, nah, for the mm, flow, that country yeah, grammar yeah, flow. Yeah. Like, yeah, nah, yeah. Nelly is tight. You know, and he, yeah. he had the early 2000s a yeah. lot with Ludacris yeah. and them. Like, and then I started to get into like more like underground stuff. And like Homeboy Sandman is one of my favorite artists. And, okay. Uh, um, I never heard of Homeboy Sandman. Incredibly Let's listen to him tonight then. Yeah. Incredibly dope. He's from is, Florida too? No, he's from Queens. Okay, okay. He's from New York. Um, and I've gotten to play some shows with him. He's oh, that's awesome. incredible. Um, Open Mike Eagle, who's been out mm -hmm. uh, here and yeah. stuff, you know. And then obviously like people like Most Def and. Oh, God. Man, I would love to perform most death. Well, I mean, or he's just doing those smoke uh, some weed and chop it up. He's most doing death. those uh, Doom cover shows. Uh -huh. Have you seen him overseas know, yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know he was doing that. That's yeah, dope as fuck. He's basically stuff. just doing a set of all Doom songs. Yeah, and none of his shit. None of his. Cold freestyle artists too. Oh, oh yeah, no, nah, most death. Def, most def, most def, Kanye West, <laughs> and Biggie is like the three artists I studied for freestyling, like to get my freestyling on point. Yeah, feel me? Yeah, because like they to me like they like the three best. Oh. I, it may be Eminem, but I feel like Eminem is more colder with the pen. Yeah, yeah. I think, especially nowadays, I don't know how much he freestyles now. But mm -hmm. every time I hear like little random videos of Kanye West, Kanye West still be coming with the yeah. freestyle bars. No, most Def was. You know I mean? Well, Most Def makes it look easy. Yeah. Yeah. So when you watch him, it, don't, it looks like it's written down. Well, he's mastered his flow. It's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. He's, he's has complete he's control over, the, over the tempo and everything that's happening yeah. as he's delivering the message directly from his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key, the 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 mastery of the flow, because yeah. it's basically then just becomes talking in rhythm. That's what I was about to say. That yeah. it really just most of sounds like he's talking on a I'm lot saying. of shit. It looks so the, easy when he's. And that's how I know when I'm not writing was. a good song when my shit doesn't sound like I'm talking to people. Because yeah. that's usually how I like my music to sound. If it sounds too like, yeah. just oh no, too struck. Yeah, force or structure. Like I'm trying to think about it too much. I'm like, oh no, this is a boo boo song. I got to come back to it later. A hundred percent. I might have the hook down, but the verse is not coming out proper. Yeah, I feel you. That's why I usually got freestyle to get my verses out. And then, and like, I'll write down the six bars I like and keep on going like that. I'll freestyle uh, patterns and flows. Yeah. No words, just the mumble. Now, I feel you. you know? Yeah, like a and cadence then, and a yeah. harmony. Yeah. See, now that's what I do, Dan. Yeah. I, I mumble. Yeah. That, like, scratch. The, no, I do the same yeah. thing sometimes. I mumble like, out the words, even though there's no words there. And then yeah. one word might come out. Like, I might be able mumble. to pick it, and then I'll work, I'll work backwards and forwards. Like, sometimes... Yeah. You know, not every song is like from beginning to end. Sometimes you'll have a part in the middle, yeah. and you're like, okay, this is cold, like right where it is, and then you'll build forward to the beginning, and then off of that to the end. Yeah, and now you, know, I've done that before. Yeah, and there's different ways like that, but yeah, the best artists that I listen to all sound like they're just talking. Yeah, and totally the words 
won't even have to technically rhyme, but they sound right because the flow is good. The game is like that. If you listen to the game, mm -hmm. like the LA rapper, like yeah. a lot of his shit don't rhyme, but it just, it flows. Yeah. yeah, it flows. Game. Feel me? Like however his writing technique is, yeah, it just flows, and that's what you want. Like you said, you want it to sound like you're talking to somebody. Nipsey was so good at that. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, like, definitely. He took his time on the beat, the, yeah. and he stuck to like. See, that's one thing. And I like that too. The time that it's hard for me to stick to is having like that particular voice. I'm yeah. too versatile, yeah. or maybe like. His, his I, but that's something I appreciate about Nipsey, like you said, is that he always got on something that sounded like it would fit his voice. Yeah. He never stepped out of his like parameters and got on like no drill beats or you know what I'm saying. He always stayed in like the melodic, yeah. psychedelic tone. Yeah. That's why currency is so dope. Yeah, because currency, mm -hmm. he don't switch up his he sound too much. His sound, he knows everything. Yeah, and like I've listened to a lot of like currency interviews where he talks about what he does and just like, you know understanding who he is and where he wants to be yeah. and just cultivating everything around that sound, his brand, the Jet Life stuff. Correct. Everything is just, that's it. And the music is the vehicle for everything else. And Currency will put out 100 albums a year and they might all sound the same, yeah. but they're all him. And so anybody who's listening to him is going to be like, I'm going to, this is it. It's oh, the soundtrack yeah. for what we do. But you want yeah. consistency too in the sound as a yeah. as a follower of someone's <laughs> music. You want consistency. Yeah. If they're everywhere, yeah. you might be like, well. Yeah, you turn currency on yeah. to hear a currency song. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Totally. If yeah. I wanted to hear, you know, somebody else, I'd never hear somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's because you can depend on what's going to be delivered before yeah. you even look for the track. Oh, yeah. you, you know what's there. You know, now you got to have that consistency. Nah, so then, I know you told us earlier this song hasn't been released yet. No. So is this part of an album? Yeah, so Derwin and I, I mean, we've been friends for a long time. We met at a show. We performed at a show. I had some footage. We met in a bowling alley parking lot, exchanged footage, kept yeah. seeing each other around town, we ended up getting a <laughs> house together and living together. Uh -huh. And then I watched him in Orlando navigate the scene and do the open mics. And that's kind of yeah. where I learned everything was like watching him. Oh, wow. It. And like he would hit the open mics every night and he would work at the taco shop till two in the morning and then come home and make music. And like he was always working, yeah, you know, he was grinding. And yeah, always. And he was like, look at and I was like, fuck are yeah. you getting off of work, bro? And, yeah. and thinking about 100%. coming here to record some fucking music. 100%. Go to sleep. And I, yeah, 100%. And <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we'd sit there and play Madden and have conversations and do the thing. And, and I learned a lot watching him. So when I moved from Orlando to Maine, I took that uh, playbook and no, I feel you, implemented bro. it. And Man, that's all it is ever. Like, either you can watch somebody that's doing some great shit, and you mm -hmm. can copy that great shit. You can just be like, I'm going to keep on doing the same shit, even yeah. though it's not working for me. Yeah, yeah. My and really, you can apply that to other things, too. No, yeah, totally. Not just the music, yeah, but not just, just everything. everything. Yeah. My dad always told me, if you want to be successful, you watch someone who's already successful, do what they did, but do it your way. Yeah, Correct. totally. That's yeah. what Tony Robbins uh, preaches. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I definitely believe that. But Derwin and I have been passing music back and forth since for... 10 years now like and mm -hmm. we finally got stuff coming together so we got yeah. five or six tracks so it'll be part of a project okay uh, well, that's dope that's coming out later i'll okay. be looking forward to that i've yo. got more music coming out before that with some other people that mm -hmm. is just me and different producers and like i made that beat and he's made some other beats oh, that beat is cold thank you thank you so you make beats or you just only make beats just for yourself right now for me like i don't like i don't consider myself a producer or beat. i just learned enough to make a page to write on yeah, yeah. and then I pass it off to I someone who's better than me. Heck yeah. uh, he is an actual producer. He can make some very dope, dope beats. beats. Yeah. Like, and so I'll be lucky if I get one that, that we're like, okay, let's use that one. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. Oh God. You said it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a couple of those where I'm just like, I made that one. That's cool. You know, but yeah, no, I'm, I write and I just wanted, I didn't, I stopped wanting to rely on getting stuff from other places mm -hmm. and just be able to create myself. Man. So I learned just enough to make a page. You retain more of the revenue too, and more of the proceeds, and it's less like middlemen. Because honestly, man, sometimes like when you contact people on YouTube, they be funny about beats, and sometimes yeah. like they'll see that like, come on, bro, you know I'm an up and coming artist. You know I ain't got no thousand dollars for no beat. Yeah. Why don't we just the one we can't talk about the money on the back end and do the yeah, would you take two fifty right now? And yeah, then we yeah. do all the royalties. And <laughs> yeah. feel me, once the if yeah. the song pushes well, then and like I, you, you know, gonna get your cut. I get it. Feel me, like, you gonna get your mailbox money. Charging for for stuff is something that I've never been good at, 
and like cause and the one that gets me though is when a producer will message me mm -hmm. be like hey you should rap on this and like give me the beat Mm -hmm. And then I'll write something to it, and they'll be like, okay, that'll be $500. I'm like, yeah, I've had that like, happen before, bro. I'm like, you sent it, like, you. I didn't hit you up, bro. It. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, And I was like. You getting at like, me, bro? I wasn't even thinking the yeah, fuck about you. Yeah, I was you. like, I thought that we were going to, like, do it together and then do the thing. Me too, Dan. And. <laughs> yeah. it, no, it, I, I, it, just, it, I, I wondered if other artists experienced that like, type of shit. Because, like, I get it. Like, if I go to somebody and say, I want that beat, yeah. you want to charge me for it? That's yeah, perfect yeah, sense. That's your art. You made that. I want it. I'll pay you for yeah, it. Yeah, here's the 500. But if you come to me and say, give you me a verse on this, on this beat, I'm assuming that we're working together. Yeah, we're and, collaborating. And then, but if it also, too, if, hey, I want to give you this beat, it's going to be $200. If you're upfront about it, I could yeah, just say, yeah, I could could just not, say yeah, no. Yeah, because yeah. you you're not taking my choices. Yeah, well. I could just say no. But if I write to it and then you say it's going to be this, I'm like. Bro, you're just wasting my time. I'm like, God, yeah. one, I don't have that much money, so you can on with that well, plus yeah. now, <laughs> well, well, yeah, now like, it's extortion now no yeah. it is because like, if you're emotionally attached to the yeah. beat you then now try to let me come up with the money yeah because so, i already wrote the song yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and like might like, as well can finish it yeah. please. And, and i'm also too I'm like i like working with people i know yeah not yeah, me too man definitely. i'm i'm heavy on that like yeah. unless it like it's in something impeding us meeting up with each other yeah. i really prefer to be in the studio with the other yeah, artist yeah. or the producer yeah with him making it be and we just work on the complete art with each yeah. other in the same and setting. i like in the now that way where okay this is our like our thing that we're gonna make together and we're mm -hmm. gonna split everything you know however it goes if, if we put this out and it hits everyone's getting their percentage or whatever yeah. but we're just gonna make this you're bringing the beats you're bringing the verses you're bringing the like we're all doing it you know yeah. and i think at a certain level that's how you build your team that way and you do it like that but if yeah, i don't yeah. know somebody and like oh we should like i want to know you before i work with you yeah like like that, you know, unless you just want to buy a verse or whatever, you know, then that's different. You know, yeah, someone yeah. hits you up and it's just like, oh, I need a verse on my thing. You don't know who they are. They send you a beat. It's going to cost. No, I feel the same you way. Know, not yeah. totally because we're not getting personal, yeah. bro. Like, it look like it's just business. Yeah. Um, so, man, so we're going to have to shut it out, man. Any final um, shout outs you like to give, Dan? Uh, no, I mean, I appreciate you guys. Give me your Instagram one yeah. more time. A lunar one. landing on um, everything. Let them know, um, feel me, what website they could. Yeah, bandcamp.com backslash a lunar landing, or just go to the Instagram. It's in the bio there. Everything's there. I've got it pretty easy for people to just go to or just send me a message, and I'll happily just send you uh, where everything can go. You, you got know? any music videos on YouTube? Yep, I got some stuff on YouTube. I just did a, a little living room session. How uh, can they subscribe to you on YouTube? A lunar landing on YouTube. Oh, perfect. Everything, yeah, perfect. Everything Everything's the same, same thing. Right. Everything's the same no, thing. I, I love that, man. I'm yeah. the same way, too, with my grand. That it makes it easier to be found. And, and if you type in a lunarlanding.com in your web browser, it'll take you right to the band camp. Like, you, it's very easy. Uh, but, yeah, that's about it. And just be nice to people that you see. <laughs> I, like that. <laughs> I like, like that. I like that. I like that. It's not yeah. that serious. Nah, for real. It's not. Man, I appreciate you coming in today, Dan, and promoting your wonderful music. For sure, for, for sure, Dan. I appreciate you. With that being said, peace and love, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember. Ah, I'm Mike L., and you saw it first on Featured. Peace and love. Let's go. I'm blowing chronic smoke in the wind. Going places you've never been, accumulating dividends. Mostly Benjamins. Bought a Ferrari just to shit on the bins. Looking fresh and clean, hottest nigga on the scene. Don't any of you rock MC. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and your subscriptions. If you have a business or a service you would like to promote, or if you don't have one and you just want to come on the show and talk and be a guest on Featured, please DM us at featured underscore guest on Instagram. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. Peace and love.